Hi guys, so this is uh, just a little update on a video I made recently where I was demonstrating some of the features of the uh, Chromebook or what, what was formerly a Chromebook uh, laptop that I configured with some ham radio apps. But I wanted to show you this. One of the uh, things that I've been keen to do was completely detach the uh, the laptop from the radio. Now in this case, uh, we're gonna focus on the IC705, mainly because this radio's got key features that, that are needed, namely in this case, Wi-Fi connectivity, although potentially Bluetooth would work, but Wi-Fi is, uh, is the way to go at the moment because there's uh, there's actually some, some software that's been written for, in this case, Linux, although of course there is the uh, the ICOM software available as well, but you're limited to, to Windows. Anyway, the uh, the point here is that having installed that software, and uh, I'll link some details on the uh, on the video when I post it. What I can show you is just let's start with a few of the settings on the radio itself. So pretty easy to set up. Uh, you essentially to go into the connectors and change the mod input to WLAN, wireless LAN. Okay, also need to set up the remote settings on the wireless LAN to enable that connectivity. Okay, this is not supposed to be an instructional video, incidentally. I'm just showing you very roughly what the procedure is. And there you go. You need to set some, uh, some credentials up, so username and password, so you can access the device over the, uh, the wireless LAN. And I think that was probably about all you needed to change, but don't take my word for it, there's, um, there's much more comprehensive uh, documentation linked. So once you've done that and you've got the uh, the software installed, the software incidentally is called Cap and Hang. It, uh, it is free to use, but I'm sure the uh, developer wouldn't be averse to a fear. So I've already got it all installed and configured on this laptop. We'll come on to some of the current limitations, not necessarily with the software in some cases, with the way that the, uh, the radio works in a second. But for now, I just want to show you this. So, laptop, free as a bird, no cables. Okay, so there's, there's no USB or any other connection between the laptop and the radio. So we come back to the laptop for a second. So you can see here that um, it's registering the frequency, which is reading from the radio's VFO A in this case, but whichever the current VFO was is, is what it's going to read. And if I go back to the radio, and we'll just change the frequency there, come back here, and you can see it's updated there. So. Rig CTL or Hamlib is working, but in this case over the virtual serial port, and I say port, not port, so that's one of the little gotchas over the Wi Fi connection. Now, a couple of gotchas. The first one that I'll mention is currently there doesn't appear to be any way to connect to a secondary serial port to, um, to get a feed for the GPS as you could do if you were connecting. Uh, directly via a cabled USB connection. So if you want the GPS fix or you want to use it for time sync, not an option at the moment, but I do have a call in with both the uh, developer and with um, with ICOM UK to see if we can do anything on that front. At the moment, I'm just using a, a GPS dongle, uh, which does, does the trick. It's not quite as sensitive, it has to be said, as the, uh, the GPS built into the radio. So as a stopgap, that's fine. And generally, once you've got your fix and uh, you've synced your time, you could probably disconnect that anyway. So it's not a showstopper, but it would be nice to uh, to be able to use the uh, the GPS built into the radio because it is very sensitive. Even inside, it gets a fix literally within a few seconds. So that's the first thing to show you. Um, I've added a few little tweaks to my scripts. Uh, so here you can see IC705 Wi-Fi is connected and... It's not connected by default when the, um, the laptop starts up because 
I might not necessarily have the radio switched on at that point. So I give myself the chance to power up the radio, make sure it's connected to Wi-Fi, which incidentally could be um, a Wi-Fi uh, SSID or Wi-Fi network that you're, you're actually creating on the laptop itself. So there's no need for any additional infrastructure. In this case, I'm just using my home Wi-Fi to connect, but, um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, we've already gone through the uh, the reset you've seen that on the previous video uh, if you haven't i'll link that to uh, to this one when i post it up so let's just show you this so if i go into start up fl digi okay you can see that's currently on 14070 if i flick the frequency up we can see that that's changed on the radio so that's clearly demonstrating the, uh, the cat control working there we go switch it back and we'll just make sure that I've got the uh, the monitor on the radio so we can hear the audio going out. Let's turn it up just a fraction. Okay, and we'll click tune. There we go. And we can see that the PTT is engaged on the uh, on the radio and um, the audio is going out via the virtual audio port there. Okay, that's fine. So I'll show you this as well. If we change the op mode to CW and change the radio mode to CW as well, as you have seen on the previous video, uh, native CW via the Kia is working. There we go. Okay, and absolutely no need to, uh, to physically touch the radio in between when switching modes, obviously. So I'll just pop that back onto PSK31 and change the mode back to USB D. Okay, and go back to PSK31. Let's take on this one. Okay, and we'll change the filter width as well. Okay, and again, just to demonstrate point, there you go. So we're back on PSK31 or any other mode that you wanted to use. Okay, and we'll just check that's still working. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we can come out of there. Okay, and put it out of there, and um, that's all fine. Okay, and we'll do one more, we'll just do uh, WSJTX. WSJTX, if that works, JSA Core works basically the same in, in terms of the way it communicates with the radio at any rate. Okay, so you can see it's, let's just set it to 20 meters of frequency or whisper that'll be, click tune, there you go. See it's set the frequency on the radio. You've got the PTT, audio's going out. Okay. And I'll just show you the settings on here for what it's worth. So, if we go into the settings on WSJTX, have a look at the radio. You can see it's set up for Hamlib. You can see there, using the loopback address um, and that's basically talking to the built-in um, Hamlib or Rig CTL daemon as part of the cap and hang um, software that's installed, that's running in the background. Okay, so I'll quit out of there. Okay, and just to demonstrate the point, I mean, none of this is, is any different really um, to the previous video, because ultimately it's just virtual serial port. So if I fire up Gpredict, SSB mode, you can see that's placed the radio into split mode. It's set the RX mode to USB and it's set the TX mode on VFOB to LSB, which is what we want. Okay. 
click that back. Okay, it hasn't set the frequency. If you saw the previous video, you'll know why we're not bothering to do that because we'll go into G Predict. Okay, and then we'll go down to Radio Control and we'll pick a random satellite. So the RF44, not necessarily up at the moment, but it will still tune it for Doppler anyway. So we'll engage that. And then we can see there that's tuning the downlink. Okay, you'll see that that will tally up with compensated frequency for Doppler there. And if you just turn off the monitor so it doesn't squeal at me and engage the PTT, there we go. You can see that that's tuned up. There you go, you can see it tuning so that's tuning the uplink obviously we know it's a uh, half duplex radio but uh, it's still tuning the uh, the uplink or the downlink for doppler without any problems so that's fine we'll come out of g predict close that okay last instruction as before sets the radio back to usb d on 14.070 or any frequency if you're choosing okay so that's it What's the other gotcha? So the other gotcha currently uh, is that the um, the drivers for Cap and Hang only appear to support pulse audio, uh, not ALSA. Now, where's the problem in that? The the problem in that, and incidentally, um, this is only my observation. This might not be the way it is. I mean, in reality, I've queried it with the developers, so we'll see what they come back with, but. The point being, if you can't get it to work with ALSA, then some other products uh, like Direwolf, for example, or potentially RDOP, uh, won't work. Unless anyone's already done it, in which case, by all means, tell me how you got around the problem. I'd be very interested. So if you can post in the, uh, the comments, that'd be great. So at the moment, that's the one thing that I've been unable to get working detached other than the GPS that we've already spoken about which is not a showstopper, but it would be nice because that would then give the ability to work AX25, Winlink, whatever else. So um, so there you go. Anyway, it was only a quick update. Hopefully that's, that's useful. And uh, as things progress, I'll keep you posted. Thanks, chaps.